And last up, we just keep moving along here in the College Lacrosse Preview Show. We uh, head to Catonsville, where we are joined by the head coach, the UMBC Retrievers. He's Coach Ryan Moran, and uh, he still has a couple of weeks to get his team ready to play um, as they're still a couple weeks away from uh, their first official game of the season on February 16th against Drexel. Coach, it's uh, Glenn and Patrick. It's always great to catch up. Thank you for spending a couple of minutes with us this morning. Sure. Glad to be here. Coach, I, I think I've asked you about this before. The The late start, is it purposeful with you? Is it something that you prefer to let's maybe not be playing when we're going to be battling snow or anything like that? It's... No, we just have had some, some really good scrimmages, and I, I have a really good relationship uh, with the Princeton coach, and we've kind of – they have to start later. They're, they're February yeah. 1st, so – they usually start around the same um, weekend that we do. And I felt like having a Princeton scrimmage is, is every bit as valuable as opening up the season against any opponent. So, uh, yeah, our first official game might be a little later, but I think the three scrimmages we have this year are really going to help us be prepared to, you know, jump in the season and run. Ryan, when you, when you look back at last season, obviously got off to a really good start. Uh, the 4 and 0 start uh, including kind of that that postponed game against Towson there um, but I, I'm curious uh, you know for you guys uh, after that it was just sort of alternating wins and losses I mean do you, do you feel like consistency was something that was maybe a little elusive and has that been kind of a priority for you guys this off season yeah I mean clearly we we're not a very consistent team in the second half or not nearly as consistent as we were in the first half I think um some of that's attributed to that early season success. I, mm -hmm. you know, I thought our guys felt like, hey, we're, we're, we're doing well, things are going good. But it truly is, once you get in the conference play, a different season. And I don't think we kind of turn that switch as quickly as the other teams. And then you end up with a, a close Bryant loss and then just a bad loss to Albany, probably our worst game of the year. And then in conference play, you're two games down. You're, you kind of put your, you kind of dug yourself a pretty big hole early in conference play there. And that's where we found ourselves. And we were not able to get out of it. You know, you were one of the top defenses in the country a year ago, and I know that's been a calling card. And you bring back an Ethan Robinson. Is it is it fair to assume that this will again be a team that's sort of built around strong defense and limiting opponents? Sure. I mean, we we like to pride ourselves on playing complementary lacrosse. Uh, I do. I have been very pleased with both sides of the ball in the first three weeks that we've been playing. Uh, we have a lot of experienced guys coming back on offense as well. So I think uh, if you play good offense, it lends itself to playing good defense, and, and hopefully you could be pretty tied up in the middle of the field. Uh, but historically, we have done a, a good job on that defensive end of the field, especially from a statistical standpoint. One of those guys at the offensive end that, that you alluded to a moment ago was Mateo Brown, who who had 34 goals for you as a junior last year, uh, taking a big jump. What was kind of behind that, uh, and, and just what do you see as an as an encore potential for him this this spring? Well, you know, extremely happy for Mateo last year. He's the type of kid that just really hardworking, humble kid. So um, usually things will work out for kids that stay the course like that, and it certainly did for him. Um, you know, we're, we're just going to look to continue to improve, you know, areas of his game. He's, he's very good at getting to the goal, very, uh, very strong scorer. Um, we're trying to obviously with all of our guys, take some of their weaknesses and try and turn them into strengths and you know, maybe see if he could be a, a better feeder, you know, he draws a lot of attention, find the open guy. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping, you know, we can, we, you know, we stay healthy and, and Mateo can have a, as good a season this year as he did last year. He is, of course, Ryan Moran, UMBC lacrosse coach. He is with us here on GCR in the College Lacrosse Preview Show. Coach, you know, who else, like, as you try to take that next step forward, and you talk about playing complimentary lacrosse, who else do you feel like might be ready to step up and, and, and help make that jump in being a more complete team? You know, um, <laughs> it really is not about individuals, and I hate to say it, and I'm not, I'm not kind of dodging the question. Um, really, it's, it's, it's everyone buying in, everyone sacrificing, everyone understanding what their role is specific to the team and, and being passionate about that role. Um, you know, so uh, that's really what we preach to our guys on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you know, but from you know, a standpoint on both sides of the ball, it's good to have Brian Dragoning back. Yeah. He was pretty much injured all of last year. He broke his foot at the end of the fall. 
and he never really, I think, got too comfortable uh, coming back from that. And I'm, I'm hoping this year, uh, so far, so good. He's looked great in the fall. He's looked good in preseason so far. So having him back uh, at full strength will be great. And and having Michael Doty back at full strength. I mean, he hurt his knee pretty bad in the first game versus Drexel. He's a tough kid. He came back in like five weeks, but he was playing the second half of that season, kind of injured too. So um, those two guys, if they can stay healthy along with Mateo, I think could could, uh, could create a pretty formidable attack that we like. Um, and then defensively, uh, I definitely got to mention Trey Fleece as a guy that can really help us. He's taken that next step as a short stick D midi, just great motor, plays hard, uh, can get doing really well on the wings, has the type of attitude and mentality that you want out of a short stick D midi. So I, I think his play could really lend to us having a, a strong year on that side of the field. In the cage, Jason Ting last year, uh, over 50% uh, saves, under 10 goals a game uh, allowed. Uh, and that came after having had a little bit of experience, but not a ton uh, in 2022. How much more settled do you feel like he is, and, and, and how good do you feel about the goalie situation as you head into the year? Yeah, I'm very happy with how Jason's been playing. Um, very proud of him for the year that he had last year. We're hoping that he can build upon that, maybe even have a better year this year. Um, you know, he's a comfortable, confident kid. And, you know, that's what you get when you're in the fourth year in the program and, and you have a whole year of starting under your belt. Uh, and then Connor McMahon, who is uh, right now playing really well as well. Uh, he's a kind of a local kid from Spalding and he's gotten some chances in, in the scrimmages his freshman year and this year. And, and every time he gets in, he's just not very rattled at all. Seems very calm, cool, collected. So I'm happy what I see out of him as well. Is it, um, you know, Coach, I, I don't know how much you guys talk about this stuff, but this is UMBC lacrosse, right? It's a program with a lot of tradition, a lot of history. And I, do you guys have conversations about, hey, it's time for us. It's time for us to make that jump and get back into competing for championships and being in the NCAA tournament. It's... I think it's, I don't think it's something you really have to talk about too yeah. much. I think the kids all understand that that's what they want to do. That's our goal. You know, we take a lot of pride in trying to be – as competitive as we can within our conference and win our conference, you know, I think for a lot of teams, we're not, we're, we're no different. That's your, your, your most sure way to, to get into the NCAA tournament. Um, but, you know, I think our kids are very proud of where they play and the, to the, the tradition that UMBC has. Uh, we try to honor that with our play and practice and in our games. And, you know, we're working our tails off and aspiring to try and be a playoff team and get back to being a team that can get to the quarterfinals one game away from the Final Four like they were, I think that was in 2009. So, uh, Question I've asked a couple guys uh, this morning. I'll, I'll throw out to you for your perspective. It, the, the COVID era has been very unusual in a lot of ways, but particularly in terms of the way that people are kind of forced into – uh, roster construction and some choices that are made here and there. Uh, how has that process gone for you guys? And, and do you feel like there's going to be uh, much of an adjustment or not much of an adjustment at all after this year once most of the guys that would have been on campus when the pandemic hit will have graduated and used up their eligibility? Um, I think it will make things a little bit more settling. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were a school, we were a team last year where I thought I was going to have three starters coming back. Um, and then, you know, one or two of them decide to transfer and then one decides, hey, I'm just kind of beat up and I got a good job offer. So for us, I felt like it kind of hurt, to, if I'm being perfectly mm -hmm. transparent. Um, so now that's gone, you know, I think we just get back to some normalcy and, um, you know, hopefully have our roster start being a little bit more manageable um, with the limits there. And then uh, we've been asking everybody all morning, I don't know what the plans are for uh, for you guys from the America East as far as replay is concerned. I don't even know if you guys got to use it uh, at Hopkins last week, but um, have you dove into it, started thinking about when you throw the flag, when you don't? Like, how, how much have you spent time with replay and just your thoughts in general about it being introduced this year? Well, you know, as a conference, we've kind of said that if you have the technology to use it, you can use it, I think. We're a little bit 50-50 in the conference play of, of places that feel like they have the technology to use it. We, we all have like our, our sports editing system where you can kind of use and look back on film, but those angles might not really be enough to push the needle one way or another for an official to overturn a call. So um, I feel like we kind of jumped into this replay thing pretty quickly because of just one play in the Final Four, if I'm being honest. And it's it's – you know, not the easiest thing to do and to navigate and to effectively administer in a game. 
And we've got, I mean, at least for me and a lot of the other coaches that I've spoken with, it's been kind of spotty on, are we doing this? Is this happening? How is it happening? Um, so kind of just like reserving judgment and taking guidance from the officials and from the conference and taking it probably hopefully like one game at a time, no, get I, better at it. I get, I, I, you haven't tried to like practice your, your flag throw or anything like that, just in case you use it. Have you? <laughs> no, I have, I have no, no flag throwing yet in practice. All right. We'll have to work on that. You got to make sure it's, you know, you, you, you can't, you gotta, I, I feel like it says something about a coach how determined they are with their flag throws. I feel like it's, it's a statement, Ryan. I, I think I'd be more like a Belichick and just kind of drop, <laughs> drop it, it down in front of them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah not going to throw it anywhere. And just throw it on the ground. I appreciate it. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, two weeks from uh, Friday, the season gets underway when they host Drexel at the uh, UMBC stadium. Coach Ryan Moran, always appreciate you, man. Thanks for spending a couple of minutes with us this morning. Look forward to chatting with you as the season goes on. All right. All right, thank you very much for having me.